Frontier has just shown the third dev diary on the Celebration livestream. So let's go ahead and let's break it down. Guys, I have something exciting to share with you guys. Today's video is brought to you by me and the Down to Earth store. So head over to store.dtrade.com, check out the cool products. Not only are there new designs, but also new products like caps, beanies, jackets, which is something you guys have been asking for. You'll find the link in the video description. But for now, let's get back to the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Without With Astronomy. So we got the third dev diary, and this one revolves around combat, revolves around weapons, and there's quite a bit of new information in here. So let's go ahead and let's watch it. The world of Elite has always been a dangerous place, but with Odyssey, it takes on a whole new dimension. For the first time, pilots are going to leave the security of their cockpit. This is going to force them to have a mentality shift from bold and daring star pilot to vulnerable on-foot troop. The premise that we've taken with the sphere of combat in Elite Dangerous Odyssey is to take the nature of combat in space and bring it down onto the planet's surface. I'm going to pause the video here because there's a few things I want to touch upon. First of all, we see people running on the outside shooting with some kind of rifle or whatever, something kind of like laser or energy-based weapons at least. And we can definitely see there is a travel time on the whatever it is it's shooting. We'll come back to that in a bit. So this indicates that we're going to have weapon like mechanics in a similar way to what we have with ship weapons today. That, is, that will probably be some weapons that are going to be hit scan. And there's also going to be weapons and they're going to have different travel time, meaning depending on what weapon you're fielding, you either will have to point straight at your target or you're going to have to lead a little bit for the bull to hit if they're running across or like uh, side to side from you. So it's not just going to be pure hit scan. Um, I would expect there to be hit scan as well, but there's definitely going to be some travel time mechanic involved. In the next little clip, we see someone fighting on the inside, but unfortunately, what has happened here is Frontiers recorded the video in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and then they added bars at the top, and I would guess this is like a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. So, like, they don't have to make it look more cinematic. It's like the oldest trick in the book is to add black bars at the top, at the bottom of the video, and it makes it look a little bit more cinematic with that wider... Um, with that wider aspect ratio, but it does mean that it crops in some of the UI that we can't see. But luckily we have another picture we can use that they released doing their UI uh, overview on uh, on the forum. There is one thing we can see in the video clip that we don't see in the forum, and that is that little ship icon up on the radar um, in the top. Okay, that's pretty nice. I like that having like using that for like markers for different like key objectives like your ships your wingmates those kind of things so you can see which direction people are at since the little minimap that we have over in the corner here seems to be uh, mostly in a relatively like confined area you know i don't think the minimap is going to cover like kilometers of space i think that maybe they can zoom in and out on it that would be nice in an exploration situation that you could zoom in and out but if we head down to the lower left hand corner there's some more interesting stuff happening down here. We can see pretty much the majority of the UI. We can, of course, see the shield and the health indicators. We can see there's some an oxygen meter, there's an energy meter, and then we have some, um, some icons on top. And I think these are status icons because it looks like uh, the one we can see in the picture here is like a, a shield. So I don't know, the shields are recharging or something. I, I don't know. It would make sense. You can see we are at 96% shield in the picture here. There's also an O2 icon, so maybe that's light up if you're in an O2 atmosphere. And there's like an energy icon. Maybe there are places you can go that's going to recharge your energy, so you don't have to go back to the ship, but maybe there are other locations scattered around uh, the surface outpost where you can recharge energy. So maybe that indicates that you're currently recharging. I don't know. There's also some other icons over here. One of them is like a, a red eye kind of thing, so that could be like if there's a stealth mechanic indicating that you are hidden. Um, and there's an icon that looks like a double jump. I'm a little in doubt about that. But what we also see in the video clip is, of course, the uh, gun itself. We can see there's an ammo counter, and we also see a grenade counter, so we can now definitely confirm that it was grenades. We also saw that in the post yesterday. Overall, uh, nice to see a, a look at the UI and actually see the UI in action. One of the key elements of Odyssey's combat is what we consider the combat triangle. For the first time, we're seeing on-foot commanders, SRVs, ships, all converging into this really unique experience that's inherently unpredictable. All of these elements actually join together so that the combat can span from the surface all the way into space. By embracing ships, SRVs and on foot troops in the same combat space, it allows us opportunities to not just have combat 
in terms of people just shooting each other. It also opens up opportunities for us to have more tactical gameplay. The wide range of environments to fight in, whether that's indoors or outdoors, gives you a unique experience. Audio also plays an incredibly important role in portraying the combat experience that we are trying to get across to our players. So this next segment here, they mainly talk about this combat triangle where it's going to be some on foot, some in SRVs, some vehicles, and some on ships. And they're all going to be occupying the same space. Now, one thing that I feel is a little odd is so far we have seen people running together and people on foot shooting other people on foot. Then we have seen ships flying overhead. But we've seen ships flying overhead shooting at other ships and then we've seen SRVs drive together. But we've never, as far as I know, actually seen people fighting. Like, they, we've never seen combat across these three corners of this triangle. We've never seen, how does it work? If I'm on foot and I, someone comes in in a ship and they begin like shooting dumbfire missiles everywhere that I am, I would expect that's gonna hurt. But do I have any kind of way that I can fight back? Because if all it is, is just that they're going to be occupying the same space as a pure immersion thing. So yes, you can have ships flying above shooting at other ships, but you cannot like mix them together. Then it's going to feel a little, well, I would really like to see either some, just some like a, a forum post where they explain how this is going to work or even better, maybe some actual video showing someone by like, attacking across these different like corners of their so-called combat triangle. One of our main focuses is making the game sound cool, but way more important than that is just communicating information to the player. So the sound mix supports the player in whatever they happen to be doing at that time. It focuses their attention on things that matter most. Things like the player's breath, just how intense are they breathing? It's all to do with the stress of combat. It's not always about the bullets and the explosions. Sometimes it's about the much more intimate things that the player's experiencing. So in this next segment, they mainly talk about the sound and they're going to come back to some of that later on in the video. Again, I like the idea of sound not just being from your surroundings, but also having that feeling that if you've been sprinting a lot, you can feel the breath of your character as they're as like a heavy breathing in the uh, inside the spacesuit. I think it's going to add a lot to the game. The sound design in Elite has always been like unmatched it's been superb it's really really good it's one of my favorite parts like the looks and the sound design of late has always been amazing and i'm glad to see that it seems to be a trend that's going to continue and there's going to be a huge focus on that as well as we'll also see later on in the video here players will have to make critical decisions about their loadouts and that includes the suit they're wearing the weapons that they're taking in and this will differ really dependent on the type of situation that they're going into. We have three weapon classes in Odyssey, each linked to an individual manufacturer. So we have plasma weapons, laser, and kinetic. Those manufacturers each have a distinct style. For every weapon, the character of their manufacturer goes through every aspect of it, whether it's the look, sound, or feel. One of the things we were really trying to do with the combat to make it authentic was to create weapons that felt both powerful and satisfying to use. It's the small touches that make the guns feel designed and belong to a specific manufacturer, like the magazines on the laser weapons that are magnetized into their housing with a really satisfying noise that slides in. As animators animating weapons, what we want to do is bring as much character to the individual weapons as possible. Weapons have two functions. One is to be cool, and one is to telegraph to the player what's happening in the game. If you're holding a big rocket launcher, you feel very powerful. You shoot people from a distance, and you can wipe out groups of people. But at the same time, having that big weapon and the mobility issues with it make you feel very, very vulnerable. Okay, here we get a lot of new information about the upcoming weapons. They start about talking about that's going to be loadouts and what you bring is going to be depending on the situation you're going to go into. And we kind of knew this already. There's going to be some kind of suit built you can do so you can have different equipment and different modules with you and different abilities. Uh, but the interesting thing is that they now say there's going to be three distinct parts of uh, types of weapons. And as we talked about earlier with the travel times, there's going to be plasma, there's going to be laser, there's going to be kinetic. So I would expect that this is going to line up pretty much with what we see with ship-sized weapons, where like laser is going to be hit scan, kinetic is going to be uh, have a traffic travel time, but it's going to be relatively fast. And then you have plasma, that is the slower one, but probably hard hitting 
weapons. So it's nice to see that I kind of have the same feel as uh, as the, as the rest of Elite. And I would hope that we're going to see, or I expect we're going to see each of these classes of weapons or types of weapons in different sizes, all the way from handguns up to like big sniper rifles. But there's also a part in here where they talk about the different manufacturers of weapon. And by looking at the pictures we got in, uh, in the video, I've spotted at least three different manufacturers. We have the uh, kinematic armaments, we have manticore, and we have a Takeda. Takeda is these like imperial looking weapons, like white and blue in color, sleek design. And we also have something that looks a little bit more like something Core Dynamics would build, like, you know, a little bit more bulky, angular design, something like, uh, like the Corvette, those kind of things. So distinctly different looking. And what I like here is also distinctly different sounding. As you get used to it, hopefully you're gonna be able to listen to the weapon and say, okay, that was one shot, it sounded like a relatively large weapon and I could hear from the sound of the shot, whether it was uh, a plasma or kinetic or what kind of shot it was. So you can, just by listening, okay, hopefully gonna be able to get some indication of what weapons are your enemies um, carrying and should you be worried about is like, if they're pairing plasma, then okay, you can maybe dodge them a little bit easier. Well, it was something you probably is gonna have a harder time with them using laser weapons. So I don't know, something along those lines. Each of the weapons needed to sound unique, but each of the family types needed to have their own sonic identity. Part of designing these weapons was to have an emphasis on gun tails, gun tails being the second part of a gunshot. We were really fortunate enough to go to Pinewood to record a small set of weapons, but in a huge variation of different environments, ranging from huge hangar type spaces and built up streets to kind of really small, intense, tight interiors and stairwells. So we then applied these gun tiles to each corresponding weapon, so they sound different in each interior and exterior space that we created. Not only does it make the guns sound more interesting, but it also helps the player know where they are, creating more immersive experience. Okay, that's probably the coolest thing I've seen in a while. Like, one thing is, I mean, it's pretty cool, like, if you're building computer games, it's a pretty cool, pretty interesting job. But now you also get to play with guns. Now this is just playing unfair. <laughs> no, but I kidding aside, I think it's pretty cool. I think it is awesome that they're taking the environment into consideration so that your weapon sounds differently, whether you are in a confined space inside a, a base somewhere or whether you are out in the open um, under the blue sky or whether you're running in between buildings and that kind of stuff. I think that's really, really cool and again, it just shows how much attention Frontier puts into the, into the sound design of, uh, of the game. And I think it's going to just add a whole other level to it. I think it's amazing. And looked like they had a ton of fun recording those sounds. I sure would have. It really does feel like you're in the middle of a battle. You can hear the bullets popping in the distance. You can see and hear the ships flying overhead. The AI soldiers shouting and shooting and running. The explosions flashing and roaring. It really feels like you're in a situation where any small decision could have a huge consequence and there's something really compelling about that. We put a lot of consideration into the combat and Elite Dangerous Odyssey. We really hope that you like it as much as we do. So that's it for this dev diary. Now, I'm not expecting we're gonna see any more information or content coming out regarding Odyssey from Frontier this year, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop. I'm definitely gonna keep posting videos on Elite and whatever I feel like playing a specific day. So if you want more Elite Dangerous content, go down and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember to give this video a like, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.